pistons that we built up earlier. And first thing I want to do is just come in here and wipe out our bores just to get any of the crud we've gathered up from painting the block over spray or just dust that's collected on it. And then I want to move around to the back side on the crankshaft journals and I'm just going to wipe off any dust or something that's settled onto our uh, piston. And I'm just going to take a and give them a little wipe down. <coughs> when we fit the rods, we made sure that we indexed the caps and we, uh, uh, so when we take them apart, we'll keep all the shims and the caps in the right direction. But just happens that the first one I want to do is number one, so I'm going to smear a little oil on that journal and we'll go back around to the front of the engine and I'll separate the rod cap and start installing that number one piston. So we elected that one to be our number one when we fitted made sure that it fit the crank fine and we've indexed our rod caps so we know how to put it back on correctly and I just simply separate it but I like to keep the shim and the rod in the orientation that it goes so the pistons installed with the split of the piston away from the cam the wrist pin goes towards the cam so this piston is going to set in there just like that. So I'm going to take my rod cap off and I'll set it over here on the back side of the engine just exactly how I want to install it. I'm going to wipe off the journal. My piston is good and clean. I'm going to put a little oil on the bearing surface. I'm going to drop some oil down on the wrist pin. Make sure that I got some oil there. So on the initial startup, still it's until it starts slinging oil all over the inside, we at least got some lubrication. The piston is going to go in this fashion, but the first thing that I want to do is. I'm going to come in here with a little oil and I'm going to wipe down the cylinder so I make sure that I've got a good coating of oil on the cylinder. The split goes away from the cam. I'm just going to set my piston up in there right like that for right now. And I want to come in here and make sure that I've got oil into the ring glands. And I'm just rotating them around and putting a little bit of oil on them. Make sure that we get them good and covered. And I'll put a little extra oil on the skirt even though I've got some oil wiped on the cylinder and the rings I just set them up about to where the gap is about a third of the way from everything I'll get that away from that expansion groove and something like that So we got a brand new ring compressor, so it might fight me just a little bit here. Yep, it's going to. Right there, it expanded. And there is a top and a bottom to a ring compressor. There's all different kinds of styles. This one has a 
a couple of bump outs around it where it won't slide down in. They send a little tool with it, but I find that a ratchet works really nice to do this. Just a quarter inch drive. Get that down snug. And I did that right. It didn't rotate it, did I? No, splits where I want it to be. So come in here and just keep I find that I it's necessary to kind of seat keep that seated down. But that's it. The rings in. Turn the pistons in. So we'll go to the back side and finish putting together the rod cap and sleeves. Okay, so even though I old that, I think I'll just put a little more on it. And I can pull that down. And you gotta get it. Index marks over here, and here's my index marks on the cap. And so this shim was on this side when the rod was made and when we fitted it and this shim is on the opposite side and we have we ordered a set of rods that were X'd and we drilled the hole in it we're going to run a set of dippers on this so you can set that in place and then here's our Ford supplied dipper okay so which way does it go on? Well it goes on in the direction the crankshaft rotates crankshaft comes down through the, through the oil dip that's in your pan and picks up oil and slings it up onto the camshaft so for it to scoop uh, we want to have it to where the scoop is in the direction of the rotation tapered edge and a square edge. Square edge obviously goes to the connecting rod, the taper edge away from it. So you want to make sure that you don't get them slid around. And then we can simply take our 9 16 inch wrench And I'm just going to run these down snug for now. And when we get all of them installed, then I'll come through and I'll set the torque on it. And typically about 30 pounds. The pressure is all that's needed. Uh, 30 pounds may not get the hole lined up for the cotter key. Don't back it off. Go ahead and go on further. But. Uh, Some people use uh, self-locking nuts here, um, you know, cotter keys work just fine. So we've got three more to install and that's what we'll do on all of them. And so let's get started. <laughs> 